Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Dora of Increase, and my name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So, I'm not wearing my glasses today just because I have the ring light right in front of me, and if I were to put on my glasses, um, my regular actual light. Okay, so I have the pretty glasses that I got from a website called firmu.com, which I'll leave their link down below. It's not sponsored video or anything like that. I just love their glasses. And then I have my actual glasses that I got from my doctor, um, but you guys can see the the ring from the ring light, so I'm not going to wear them, um, which isn't too bad since I don't have much to read from a far distance um but this video as the title says below is going to be the announcement for the 2020 book club and bible study for daughter of increase so before i dive into that if you have not seen the last two videos i posted definitely check them out because they're going to kind of sort of coincide with this announcement so the first one is going to be about the faith reads readathon which is basically a readathon that i will be hosting for the month of january in which we are going to be reading christian fiction and non-fiction books which i'm so excited about so all the information for this will be linked down below or you can just click the eye on the screen to go to that video i talk about the um the readathon so it's going to be a readathon with a photo challenge and there will be two giveaways um one giveaway will be for the photo challenge that we're going to do within those first seven days of january and then the other giveaway will be towards the end of january most likely a february giveaway for the winner i'm going to just select somebody whoever joined the um faith reads readathon and give them some items so we have that as a first thing and then following that i did a video all about the 2020 52 week intentional reading challenge that i'm going to be hosting which i hosted last year but i didn't keep up with it um so i'm redoing it for 2020 because i know a lot of you ladies actually enjoyed it and were keeping up with it but um i'm redoing it for 2020 and here's that document. Again, you could just click the eye on the screen to go to that video where I talk about it. And I run through all the prompts and things like that. But basically, the point is to read and be intentional in your reading. Um, I'm an avid reader. I love reading. We know this. Um, I'm a book nerd. I've been a book nerd since, like, middle school, elementary school days. Books are, like, my life. They are a way for me to escape. They are a way for me to learn and grow. Previously, maybe before two years ago, I was reading solely for the purpose of entertainment. But within the past year or two, I've been reading to not just for entertainment, but also for the purpose of growing in my faith, um, which is where the Christian fiction and Christian nonfiction books come in. I am not a nonfiction reader. I've tried it. I, I don't care for nonfiction reads, but I've noticed that I love Christian nonfiction because of what it does and how it empowers me and how it inspires me and how it edifies my spirit um, and brings some things to light. So I want to just encourage other people to be intentional in their reading. So there are different levels. The first level is um, level one, which is basically you read one book every four weeks, which would come out to 13 books for the year. Level two is you read one book every two weeks, which will come out to 26 books for the year. And then you have level three, which is you read one book a week, which will come out to 52 books for the year. Then level four is just free spirit. I'm going to try to go for level three, which is 56 books. Um, I think this past year so far, I've read, I can actually tell you guys exactly how many books I've read so far that were Christian related um let me just go to my goodreads and i do have a goodreads account that's specific to um daughter of increase so if you guys are interested you can just click the link down below to go to my goodreads and you can see all the books that i've read and reviewed um but let's just go to my gear and books i'm literally on the website right now just popping it up okay so i've re oh wow really i've read 55 wow i'm i'm shocked i've read 55 christian books and in total, I've read a hundred and... I'm actually stunned, you guys. I really thought I was, like, in the 30s for Christian reading. Okay. So, how many books have I read for the year? So, for the year, I've read 158 books. 
and 55 of those books were Christian related, which is insane to me. Um, and I'm saying it's insane because, again, I'm still new to the Christian fiction genre, especially new into reading a lot more nonfiction books. So I'm actually impressed that I've read 55. So that's insane. So I am going to try for 56, but I'm also really going to be like a free spirit and just flow. Um, hopefully we can read more than that, but we'll see. But um, yeah, okay, that's cool. But yeah link you can just click the on the screen a link to the what blog post will be down below for you guys to download it but um you have sort of the instruction information and then the actual prompts so we have that so i'm gonna start off with the 2020 bible studies so this was a hassle for me to figure out because i know for 2019 we didn't get to all of the things that i wanted to study i wanted to do hosea and philippians i think i said i wanted to do james james as well but i didn't get a chance to do it because so much was going on and then my elevation happened and then i was doing all of that work um so this year i'm hoping that we can get to everything we might not get to the last one on here but I'm hoping we can get through everything. So as of right now, we are going to be studying six books, but I'm saying five because I consider Peter one and first and second Peter, Peter all together. So from February to May, we will be diving and finishing the gospel according to John. And I had totally forgot that we started it until one of you ladies had reminded me. <laughs> so yeah, I've been working on that. I've been slacking on that. So that's this is why we're starting in February because I'm just, I'm behind on everything and I need to get my life together, you guys. Just pray for me. Um, but yes, lots of stuff going on in January for me as far as like ministry work and then preparing DOI. So I just figured we would start book club in February and Bible studies in February and then have January just be a fun kind of relaxing month. That's what I'm aiming for. So the gospel code is, okay, so here's a document, okay, if you guys want the PDF link down below but this is a document so from february to may we will be going through the gospel according to john okay after that we're gonna take a break in june um we're not gonna do any bible study we're definitely gonna take a break and i want to definitely make sure that i give you guys breaks in between depending on how heavy and john is such a heavy heavy book um it is 21 chapters so we're gonna be doing chapters 6 to 21 but the thing is the gospels have really long verses like 50 verses 72 verses like they're long especially john so that's why i'm gonna go straight february to may and then um we're gonna take a break in june and then in july we'll dive into james um now i'll talk about that afterwards okay so august we're gonna go into philippians um and then we're gonna take september off for a break again another break then october we will tackle peter first and second peter November we will hopefully do Colossians. I'm um, fingers crossed if things go well with John. Now all of this is subject to change depending on how the gospel according to John Bible study goes because it's very long. So depending on how that goes, keep in mind everything else is subject to change. We're definitely going to be tackling John and James for sure in 2020 and I'm hoping to get to Philippians. But um yeah, so October will be first and second Peter together. And then in November, we'll dive into Colossians. In December, there will be no Bible study. So there's no Bible study in September. There's no Bible study in December. And there is no Bible study in June. So we're going to have three breaks because, like I said, it's going to be... It, it's heavy. Um, and I want to, I wanted to really focus on the prophets and the letters for this year. But because we haven't finished John, we can't do that. <laughs> so that is that. Um, so that's how the Bible study is going to run. If you want more information, link down below for you guys to download everything. But again, here it is. We're going to do John, James, Philippians, 1st and 2nd Peter, and Colossians. So hopefully we can get through that. Okay, so let's move on to the 2020 book club picks. So I have all this information listed down below on my blog if you want more information, if you want to download the document for yourself. But quickly, here is the document running through the books. So it's going to be nonfiction, biblical fiction, nonfiction. And then we're going to do biblical fiction, nonfiction, biblical fiction. So that's how that's going to go. So again, two pages for you guys to download for yourselves but i'm quickly going to run through all of the books so the first book that we're going to be diving into is in february and because we have the readathon going on in january i figured we'll be reading a lot of fictional novels so we can dive into some non-fiction in february and that will be goliath must fall by louis giglio 
I love this book. I've read the book and I've done the Bible study and I love it so much. I don't own a physical copy of the book, so that's why the image is here. I have an e-copy of the book and I really want the e-copy of this book so bad. What I can remember is that it talks about the whole story of David and Goliath and how we need to um, kill our giants, but it's not so in the sense of you being david it's more so about letting jesus be the david in your life and killing and knocking down your goliath now your goliath can be an addiction it can be um a situation a person you're dealing with any type of thing and he really dives into that in the book i enjoyed the book i enjoyed the bible study actually let me grab the bible study for you guys okay so this is the bible study that goes along with it it's a study guide i'm um, not really a bible study so it's a six session study guide it is really good and i am going to incorporate this into the book club for discussion videos um so we have this but i really do enjoy the study i enjoyed the book i actually finished the book but never got a chance to really fully dive into the bible study uh the study guide um i got up to i think session two no i completed all of session one but i've never got a chance to dive in but as you can see i was really enjoying it a lot so i'm going to be incorporating this so you can get it if you want to you really don't have to um purchase the study guide i personally bought it because i just wanted it at the time um but yeah it's winning the battle against your giants um that's really what i can remember actually let me look on the back so i'm actually going to read the back of the study guide to give you guys more information <laughs> so it says it's not the height of the giant but the size of our god it's likely you have a giant in your life, an adversary that's diminishing your ability to live a full life. Frozen in the grip of rejection, fear, anger, comfort, or addiction, you've lost sight of God's promise for you and have settled for less than his best. He has a better plan for you. A plan for you to live in victory. That's why he silenced your giant once and for all. And then it talks about how the succession Bible study videos. I think I have the videos. I'm going to try to incorporate the videos as well into this so... We're gonna, I'm going to work that out and see if I can download. Um, I have the videos on my computer. I'm going to try to see if I can screenshot them to share them with you guys um, as we do the the um, reading. But yeah, so that is going to be for um, Goliath Must Fall. That will be from February... Sorry. It's going to be from February 2nd to the 22nd. I have everything written on a, pa a piece of paper, so excuse me. Um, and I don't have my glasses on. So it's a nine-chapter read, so I split that up. So that's why it's going to be from February 2nd to 22nd. So, following that, we dive into the next book, and the next book is going to be for March. That's going to go from March 1st to April 13th, excuse me, March 1st to April 30th. This book has 43 chapters, so that's why it's so long. Um, it is two months, but um, it's going to be The Viral Zorda by Misu Andrews, Biblical Fiction. I have not read this book at all. Actually, was recommended this book from Jenna over at Jenna Van Marek on YouTube. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is her one of her favorite biblical fiction novels. Um, so... I have never like read this so I'm gonna be reading this with fresh eyes with you guys which I'm actually excited about um, having not read this a lot of these books I haven't read yet myself so I'm gonna be experiencing it with you guys for the first time as well but we have this um, quickly just reading the back it says Anipai, An Anipai, I don't know how to pronounce her name so I'm gonna listen to the audiobook to get her name's pronunciation right because I don't know how to say that but um, Anipai, I don't know has grown up in the shadows of Egypt's good god pharaoh aware that anubis god of the afterlife may take her life or her siblings at any moment she watched him snatch her mother and infant brother during childbirth a moment that awakened in her a terrible dread of ever bearing a child now she is to become the bride of sebek the kind but quick-tempered captain of pharaoh tet's army in order to provide Sebek the heir he deserves and yet protect herself from the underworld gods, Anip must launch a series of deception even involving the Hebrew midwives, women ordered by Tut to drown the sons of their own people in the Nile. When she finds a baby floating in a basket on the Great River, Anip, Anipai, Anip, again, I'm sorry, her name will be on the screen, <laughs> believes Egypt's god have answered her pleas, entrenching her more deeply in deception and placing her and her son, Mahai, whom handmaiden Miriam calls Moses in mortal danger. As bloodshed and savage politics shift the balance of power in Egypt, the gods reveal their fickle natures and Anip wonders if her son, a boy of Hebrew blood, could one day become king. Or does the god of her Hebrew servants, the one they call El Shaddai, have a different plan for them all? So it just sounds really good. It's going to be about Moses as a baby and um, Pharaoh's daughter who found him. So I'm super excited to dive into this. And I just, I can't wait so we have this as our first biblical fiction read for the months of march to april 
So following that, we're going to go back into nonfiction, and this is going to be from May 17th until June 20th, and that's going to be Lies When Believe by Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth, right? I said it right? Okay, yes. Um, and I'm so excited to read this book. I've been holding on to this book for almost a year now, I think, and I'm excited to dive in. Now, I have raved and talked about um, Lies Young Woman Believe, which just gutted my life to the core it, it gutted me um if you haven't seen my review just click the eye on the screen to go watch that review i enjoyed that book so much um and that book is geared towards teenage girls girls and maybe they're like um early 20s if you will and i'm saying early 20s because I, I feel like when i was 20 i was still dealing with some of the stuff that was discussed in that book um and then they have one for little girls which i've read and it was cute um but i'm excited to dive into this one especially after reading lies young woman believe that book just it gutted my life it it was amazing there is a study guide to this so i'm gonna quickly grab that because i forgot to bring that over of course and the study guide is right here. So I have not done the study guide, but you can get the study guide if you want to. I will, again, incorporate the study guide into the book club book. But um, I have the study guide, and I, I personally will be doing it as I read because I'm excited to dive in. But um, I'm going to just quickly... And this is the updated expanded version. There is an older version of this book. This one is the updated one. So I just want you guys to know... Um, that ahead of time okay this is updated um but it says since its initial release in 2001 lies women believe has sold over 1 million copies and been translated into 26 languages now in an updated and expanded edition nancy demoss welcome and shares this liberating message with a new generation lies women believe spots lights 45 lies commonly believed by christian women lies about god themselves priorities emotions marriage parenting and more and it offers the only means to challenge counter and overcome deception the truth so um it includes an entire chapter on lies about sexuality it is a revised version of the original book and things like that so some of the chapters in here i'm going to run through is um that you know god is not really good he doesn't love me he's just like my father that you're not worth anything um that you have your rights that you need to love yourself more that you can sin and get away with it that's a good one um that it's not your fault how your sexuality is separate from your spirituality god's standards for sex are out of date that is definitely a lie um there's no hope for my marriage if i submit to my husband i'll be miserable my children are my number one priority. I'm not or she's not a good mother. It's all about me. So these are just different lies that she goes through. There are 10 total um, chapters. Actually, no, there's not 10 chapters. There's 15 chapters um, if you include the introduction, prologue, and all that ex extra stuff. But, um, yeah, so this, again, is going to be from May 17th to April... Sorry. May 17th to June 20th. And I'm sorry, again, I'm not wearing my glasses, so bear with me but um again there is a study guide you can buy the study guide you don't need it i will include some of the questions in the group for discussion um but we have that so following that we're going back into biblical fiction and this is one of my favorites yeah no i had to put this on a list and i'm so happy you ladies chose it because i adore this first of all we love this author okay if you guys don't know who i'm talking about miss tessa afshar we love her. She's phenomenal. I love her as a writer. All of her books I've loved. I've given up five stars to except for one. Technically two, but just one of her books only got a four star out of me. Um, this book is 27 chapters, so this is going to go from July 15th until August 15th, so just about a month, and, um, and it's going to be Harvest of Rubies the first book in the harvest of rubies duology and i'm super excited to get into this book with you guys because this one is her most comical book um it definitely does deal with some heavy hit hard hitting situations but of all of her books i think this one made me crack up the most just because of the couple that's involved and the characters and the growth this one does involve the prophet nehemiah which actually sparked an interest for me to personally want to study the book of nehemiah or yeah the book of nehemiah um so yes i'm so stoked to get into this with you guys so i'm just going to quickly read the back so you guys can get a little gist of what it's about and then we're going to move on to the next book so it says remarkable talent threatens to cloud a life the prophet nehemiah's cousin has been catapulted into the center of the persian court working long hours rubbing elbows with royalty and becoming the queen's favorite scribe not bad for a woman living in a man's world but a devastating past has left Sarah believing that God doesn't love her and her achievements are the measure of her worth, a measure she can never quite live up to. Darius Passagarde, I always say that name wrong, I don't know if I'm saying it right now, but Darius Passagarde is accustomed to having his way, 
a wealthy and admired aristocrat the last thing he expects is an arranged marriage to the queen's scribe an intelligent woman who scorns him can two such different people help one another overcome the idols that bind them y'all get ready for some tears get ready for some laughter some comedy like this book is everything and more to me i love it so much i have given this five stars and the sequel love it so much so i can't wait for us to dive into this this will be a one month read from july 15th to august 15th Following that, we're going to dive back into nonfiction, and we're going to read The Learning the Voice of God by Priscilla Shire. Now, I'm doing this for the month of September, um, the complete entire month of September. This is 15 chapters, so it'll be perfect for the month of September. And I do know that my sis Angela from Sisters and Pearls is going to be doing this as well in her group, um, which I am also part of. Sisters and Pearls is a sister group of Daughter of Increase, if you guys are interested. She's over there in her group doing a chronological Bible study, which I completely am failing at. Ugh. I'm, I'm failing at it. So 2020, I'm just going to restart the study all over. This is like the second or third time I've tried to get this study going. And I always get stuck or I just, yeah, so I got to get back into that. But she is doing this, I believe she said in July. In July, she's doing her book club. So I just wanted to do ours for September. Again, you ladies picked this as a book pick. So that's what's going to happen. She's doing hers in July. We're going to dive into this into in September. Yeah. So um, I think that's going to be great. So if you guys are going to be reading it with her group, that is totally fine. I'm going to be doing it with, with her group and with Daughter of Increase as well. Um, so I'm excited to see what kind of I what kind of things that she gets and then the things that I pull out. So I'm super excited for this. But um, yeah, this is How to Recognize When God is Speaking. Um, I believe this is the revised expanded edition. This one has questions in it as well. But um, on the back, it just says, Is that you, God? Wherever you are in your spiritual walk, God will find a way to speak to you in a way you will understand. Become acquainted with the voice that has spoken from a fire and a cloud with visible signs and an invisible spirit through a burning bush and burning hearts. Now with chapter challenges that help you hear his voice more clearly in your life. And um, I'm excited to die. I just, anything Priscilla writes, I'm here for. I want to get a lot of her other Bible studies and stuff like that because I'm really like... <sighs> Her and War Room, amazing. Her book, Fervent, amazing. I just, I adore her. I haven't seen her act yet in Overcomer, which I probably should actually watch this weekend, now that I think about it. I might watch Overcomer with my mom tonight. I know there's a book that I want to get for Overcomer, so if I find that book again, I'm going to snatch it up. But we're going to dive into this for the month of September. And lastly, the last and final book is going to go from October to December. This is going to be a long I think three months, October, November, yeah, it's going to be three months, about two and a half, three months, um, because this book has 56 chapters. Um, they're really short chapters, like the chapters are not super long and when, long-winded or anything, but that's because this book is actually a bind-up of the four novellas, um, and that is going to be The Heart of a King by Jo Eileen Smith, and this is going to be on The Four Loves of Solomon. So this one follows um, Abishag, uh, who, what's her name, she, the Queen of Sheba, um, Nama, the desert princess, and then Sitai, the daughter of Pharaoh. So it's basically the four loves of King Solomon, and I had mixed feelings about this book, y'all. I had a reading vlog for this book. Um, Solomon just, just irritated me so much, so I'm excited to reread this book with you ladies and see if my opinions change after having read this. Um, and yeah, so we have this, I love this cover so much. So quickly, I'm gonna read the back. It says, get swept away by a story of love, loss, and longing. King Solomon could and did have anything he wanted, including many women from many lands. But for all his wealth and wisdom, did he or the woman he loved ever find what they were searching for? In this engrossing novel, find yourself whisked away to ancient Israel where you'll meet four remarkable women. Nama, the desert princess, Abishag, the shepherdess, Sitai, the daughter of a pharaoh, and Nicola, or Nicola, the queen of Sheba. As you experience the world of Solomon through his eyes and theirs, you'll grapple with whether this king's storied wisdom ultimately benefited him and those he loved or betrayed them. This book definitely gave me a different view of Solomon because when you hear about Solomon, you hear about his wisdom so much, um, just the wisdom and stuff that he has, how rich he was. But you never really think about him as just a plain old man. Um, and I think that's one thing I love about biblical fiction is it definitely gives you a perspective on these people. They are people with feelings and emotions and, you know, they're women and men with desires and wants like 
everyone else so i enjoyed that aspect of this book and really can't wait to dive back into this with you guys so this is going to switch up between five different perspectives you're going to have the one from solomon you're going to have nama you're going to have abishag the queen of sheba and sitai and sitai was my most disliked character like i hated her so much for so many reasons so i'm excited to dive back into this book and re-annotate it and write my thoughts because <sighs> Yeah, we're going to leave it at that. We're we just going to leave it there because Sita pissed me off. She she was annoying. She she did stupid things. She said stupid things. And we're going to leave it there. But that is that. So those are all the books. Um, We will have live discussions, okay, for the year of 2020. Live discussions have been really hard for me to do this past year because just a lot was going on. And then my Saturdays were mostly taken up with, like, requirements and things that I had to do. So... 2020 we're gonna get it together <laughs> we're gonna have these live discussions and most of these books i think have like question or discussion guides or study guides so i'm definitely going to incorporate those into the um discussions i know wednesdays i would do like a weekly discussion type of thing but i think i'm not going to do that until we do our videos so that we can actually discuss them in the videos um and things like that but let me know i'm actually going to put up a poll do you want me to post discussion questions on wednesday which is like midweek for you guys to answer up in the Facebook group and um or would you just rather me save those questions for like Saturday when I get on live and we just talk about it right then and there so let me know what you guys are interested in doing by clicking the i to answer the poll but um yeah six books three fictional three non-fiction I'm excited to dive into these I think of all of these I've only read three yeah i've read three and the other three i haven't read so the three that i have read of course are harvest of rubies miss tessa Abshaw, of course i've also read the heart of a king by joe eileen smith and i've read goliath must fall by louis giglio but i have not read Farrell's daughter which i'm really super excited to dive into i haven't read lies on believe which has been on my list the whole year and then i haven't read discerning the voice of god either by priscilla shire so I'm excited to dive in. Thank you guys again for all of your love and support. I'm excited for these books. I'm glad that you ladies voted for these books because I'm here for it. But I think that is it. So if you have any other concerns or questions or anything, link down below to go to my blog for more information. Um, there are ebooks available for most of these books, I think. I'm going to check again. Um, I'll list exactly which ebooks I have available down below. And if you go to my blog, if you want to e copy of the book you can just go to the blog and it'll link you directly there for you guys to download um so yeah i think that's about it for this video so thank you guys for rating commenting subscribing all that great stuff if you are not subscribed subscribe to the family join the facebook group as well because i'm really trying to be i'm really going to be more active in here i used to be active all the time but i've been slacking like i said but um You'll find out things earlier on the Facebook group rather than me making a video. Um, so that's that. And if you are subscribed, click the bell to stay notified. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.